Hey everybody, today I'm gonna show you how you're gonna have to change your design process to go from a beginner to an advanced UI UX designer. So what this really comes down to is thinking about all of the small details throughout your design and having an answer for every single scenario that the user could potentially run into. So to show you how to do this, I have a hypothetical project that we're gonna be looking at and I'm gonna show you how a beginner designer would handle it and then how an advanced designer would handle it. So let's get into that right now. All right, for this scenario, let's imagine there's a bank and they ask one of the designers on their team to add a form to the My Profile page that allows users to update the address associated with their bank accounts. So here is how a beginner designer would probably handle this task. What they would do is probably something like this. They would look at the existing My Profile page and they would look at the other sections that are currently on there and see how they work, see how the UI looks, and then add a new address section and match that form design with some of the other sections on this page. Now, that seems simple and straightforward, right? Well, there's actually a lot more that an advanced designer would probably do here. So the advanced designer would probably start in a similar place where they would design this form, where we see our current address and this change address form, but then think about many different scenarios that could potentially happen when the user's interacting with this form. So first they might think, well, what happens in the ideal happy path here? What happens if the user just puts everything into this form correctly, and then they click save changes. What would they see? Well, maybe it would be something like this, where they would have a confirmation modal appear, where they could uh, get this message saying, please allow for up to three business days for your request to be processed. And then in a situation like that, it brings up another question. Like, okay, now that there are three business days, that the user has to wait for that up request to be submitted, something here would probably change on this form. So maybe there would be a message at the top of this form saying your recent address change request is currently being processed so that they know that something is happening in the background and they know that they should probably not submit a new um, address change, change during that time. And then there would also probably be situations in which an address change would be rejected for whatever reason. And then we would want to give them the exact reason why that um, was not rejected because maybe um, it could be something like a, an invalid address and they're not able to add it to the system on the back end. So we need to communicate that so that they're able to fix the error. And then of course, a success message also. So with the success message, they need to know exactly what happened in that and then what they can expect once that address is updated now. And also what happens on error states here? So like, let's say somebody tries to click save changes here and they don't put anything into the form or they partially complete the form. We would need to have different error messages appear on all the sections where they did not complete it so that they know to do that before clicking save changes. So I know that this is very specific just to like this form on a my profile page, but this is to really illustrate how the advanced designer thinks. They go through every scenario where a user could potentially have problems and every situation that could potentially occur and have an answer for it. So when you're designing, if you want to have a more advanced approach to your designs, I would recommend asking these questions every time you're going through a design. So first, what happens after the user completes the desired action? What can they expect? What's changing uh, because of that change that they made? And two, how could the user potentially fail to complete the desired action and how could we help them if they do? Because there's always gonna be someone that struggles and there needs to be design solutions in place 
to help those people that are struggling. And three, will other sections of the application change based on actions taken on this page? This is especially true for the more complex web and mobile apps that you might be working on. It's very common where you're gonna make uh, some sort of change and then they can, ex um, or there's gonna be other sections of the experience that will be different based on that change that they made. So that needs to be accounted for. And four, how could any error potentially occur and how can we clearly show how to resolve it? Error messages are one of the most frustrating things for users in, in the design. If they aren't handled well, it could potentially make them never come back to the app again. And five, what are all other edge cases that could potentially happen? And what's going to, what are they going to see if they do run into one of those edge cases? All of that needs to be considered. So I would say that this is really the, the biggest difference between a beginner and an advanced designer. It's how are they thinking about these small details in their design and what answers have they thought of um, for all of these different situations. Because anybody can come up with just a quick one page design that seems to, to solve what you need to, but there's always a lot more than the surface level of what you see um, and a, a, a seemingly simple project is really oftentimes a lot more complex than you might think. So I hope that this was helpful. And if you have any questions, um, just please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. So thank you for watching and have a great day.